can turn your King James Bible to Proverbs chapter 30. I would like to talk to you today about the cursed generation of the Antichrist. Some interesting things to think about in this study. Proverbs chapter 30 and beginning in verse 11. We're going to see what the Bible has to say about the issue of generations. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 11. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Hmm. Disobedient, spoiled brats, in other words. Now, of course, the Bible is so archaic and so out of date, and it just isn't relevant to us today because there are no spoiled brats out there. All the children out there are obedient to their parents. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's definitely a generation right now out there that uh, the vast majority of them are very disobedient to their parents. And they've been formed that way through mind control, through television, and uh, conforming to a system that teaches them that they came from nothing, and they're going to nothing, and they're basically just another form of an animal, and so you can act like an animal. Uh, evolution theory, in other words. Um, we are experiencing the rotten results of that satanic philosophy. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. More so, getting more true by the day. It's getting more perilous, in other words. Verse 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. I find the two there that are right next to each other, disobedient to parents and unthankful. Um, yeah, very true. Um, I remember hearing stories of my grandparents back in the early 1900s when they were very, you know, young, when they were being, when they were born and things, they would get an orange for Christmas as a Christmas gift and they were thankful for it. That was a, wow, I get to have a whole orange for myself. <laughs> Can you imagine children today? Christmas morning comes around and oh, here's an orange. They'd probably smash it on the ground and take a, you know, something that was their parents and use it to smash it with or something, you know, screaming and wailing and, you know, saying that their right, rights have been violated or something like that. Uh, yeah, prophecy has come true, definitely. Children today are disobedient to their parents. Mark chapter 13, but it gets worse. Go to the book of Mark chapter 13. We'll see another verse that ties into this whole thing. Mark chapter 13, beginning in verse 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. This is a parallel passage to Matthew chapter 24. And we are in this beginning of sorrows. I firmly believe that. And you will be seeing more of it as we continue here with the next few months of this year and into 2023 especially. Uh, it's going to be some pretty bad stuff coming. Um, you have to really make sure that your relationship is right with God. But let's continue. Verse 9. But to take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Switches over to the Jews in that time period that's coming, the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe it switches to that. Verse 10, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. The children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Could this generation do something like that? The millennials and the Gen Z and the alpha generation that comes after that? Yes, they could. And yes, they will. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
which is one of the this is one of the key scriptures right there that tells you you're not going to be in that time if you're a Christian. You don't have to endure to the end to be saved. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You can't be lost once God truly saves you, once He purchases you. He can't lose one of His purchased possessions. All right. So Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, Mark 13, verse 13, interesting there, both talk about the thing of enduring to the end to be saved. Uh, one of the quickest ways to pin a postie, post-tribber or mid-tribber or whatever else, is what happens if you take the mark of the beast and you are a sealed Christian, you're born again. What happens? They have to say, well, according to Scripture, you'd lose your salvation. Well, then you have a problem. So you see, it doesn't work. You don't have to endure to the end, but the people in the time of Jacob's trouble will. They don't have eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Do not be deceived by all this uh, post-trib stuff. Okay, go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. But again, we saw there in Mark 13 that you have parents actually, or children raising up and putting their parents to death, causing their parents to be put to death. Romans chapter 1. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affect, affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now you think about when this Bible, right here, when this translation was done, 1604 to 1611. I'm sure that they could find some children out there that were kind of bad and whatever else, but can you imagine... If you could take somebody from even back then, 400 plus years ago, and bring them forward to today and show them that the people out there, the youths out there, can you imagine what they would think? They'd be shocked. They'd be appalled. Here's a bunch of youths going by and some girl's dressed in barely any clothing and she's fornicating with multiple different guys and they're taking, you know, sniffing fumes from gasoline to get high or something. I was talking to my sister here not long ago. She has a farm down in West Virginia, and she was telling me that the youth down there actually found out that they can get high by, uh, I don't know, they burn them and breathe the smoke or if they eat them or whatever, but they these mushrooms, shrooming, you know, they call it or whatever, where you can get high off these, you know, hallucinogenic mushrooms that grow, you ready for this, out of cow pies. So... The thrill is there that you go out to a farmer's field, which they have, they raise black Angus. You go out to the farmer's field and you look for the cow pies. Oh, there's some hallucinogenic mushrooms. Let's pick them out of the cow dung and go and eat them or smoke them or whatever they do. And she said, you get sick for a number of days and then you feel really goofy and kind of, oh, after that. Insane. Absolutely insane. You, it's going through household cleaning things and trying to sniff fumes so that they can get high and you try to talk to them about the Lord and they just mock they just laugh at the Bible thinking that they're somebody and they're really something because they can play video games I mean what a useless you can see them down the road looking at their cell phone swiping their cell phone that's the future now, you know, I'm not going to set a date for the, you know, catching up or the time of Jacob's trouble getting started, but there are some people that have theorized 2033, and which is interesting because the Club of Rome came out with a study many years ago, um, big, huge, thick study, MIT professors and all this, and they said, when are we going to run out of resources? When will there be too many people, not enough resources, the Earth's pollution will have gotten to the point of no return, whatever else. And you know what year they came up with? 20. 40. Hmm. So if the catching up was in 2033, then that would mean seven years to 2040. You say, oh, then it's in 2033. I didn't say that. I have no idea. It's an interesting theory. But, you know, there's all this uh, 
net zero stuff and whatever. Um, you know, no carbon emissions by 2050 and we're going to have to change the world and all this other stuff. We're in for a very bumpy ride <laughs> for the next number of years. Um, it's going to be crazy. But think about the timing. Think about the millennial generation, the Gen Z generation, and then the newest alpha generation, which I think is 2013 to, to the present here. Uh, those that are born in that time period. My son would be one of those. Um, that generation, they're not like other generations in the past. You say, well, then you're condemning whole age groups and there's no exceptions. No, I'm not. Um, God can do something with younger people. And I've met younger people. I've seen some of these young boys, farm boys, and whatever else. And they're not like the millennials or the Gen Zers or whatever else or the alpha thing. I remember seeing there was a young boy at a tractor pull, vintage tractor pull thing. They hook up old tractors and they do the tractor pull thing. And this boy, he was probably about 10 years old, jeans and a t-shirt on, cowboy boots. And he's up there running his dad's tractor. Yeah, I thought, good. And he was respectable and everything. He wasn't sitting around after the thing. He was going around looking at the tractors and everything. And, and it, you know, he wasn't sitting there with his cell phone when he was done or sitting there on the tractor with the cell phone until they said, you know, go ahead or no. Now, what I didn't know anything else about the boy or whatever. I have no idea. He might be kind of useless. But the point I'm trying to make is just because you're part of the generation that's cursed uh, or, you know, a bad generation, say it that way, doesn't mean you have to go along with that. You don't have to conform to other people in your age group. Um, you will meet some young people that do not act their age. They act much older than their age. That's a good thing. God can save somebody like that. But you get some of these wicked, cursed generations where all the, they're all acting the same way and whatever. That's a problem. And it's, and it's in direct rebellion to the Word of God. That's a big problem. So... But I'm going to give you some theories about this generational thing with the Antichrist here in a little bit. We go back to Proverbs chapter 30. We'll see another generational uh, description here. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. To read that one more time. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not, doth not bless their mother. And you can do a huge study on that too. The thing about a foolish child is a grief to their mother and, you know, and father and everything else. There's a lot to be said about children that are disobedient to their parents. You're to honor your father and mother. But let's continue on to the next verse. Verse 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Um, do we see a self-righteous generation? Mm -hmm. A lot of these young people out there, they are the most self-righteous little brats, <laughs> disobedient to their parents, but then, well, I didn't do anything wrong. You catch them doing something, I didn't do anything. It's not my fault. Somebody else's fault. Pure in their own eyes and yet not washed from their filthiness. Hmm. Let's see about that. Second Timothy chapter 3. Go back there. We are seeing the generation, brethren, that is going to be there that will take the mark of the beast. That's the whole point of this study. It's a cursed generation. A bunch of little antichrists running around. We're seeing it. And I hear the stories all the time about people just complaining about millennials or Gen Zers or whatever. and The dumb things that they do and they have no work ethic and they don't know how to run anything. And they're just all about money and technology and very ferocious little brats. There's a lot of truth to that. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You get the ones that are professing Christians. They have a form of godliness. They might know how to talk about Jesus dying on the cross or whatever. But there's no power there. There's no Holy Spirit there. Again, I could do a big study on that. 
Verse 6, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, oh, I'm going to just keep watching YouTube videos and listening to sermons and whatever else. Did you come to the knowledge of the truth? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. <laughs> well, how long should it take? Yeah, I see that with people, you know, some of these younger, the younger generations. And, the, you know, I've watched all your videos, but I don't know if I'm saved. Well... Okay, um, did you do what the Bible then told you to do? I mean, are you following the scriptures? Really messed up stuff. Romans chapter 3. I've had numerous occasions now where some of these young people will watch my videos and, and whatever else, and they'll turn out to be sodomites, and after a while they're trying to start a relationship with me or something um no i'm married i have a son in high school we used to beat up sodomites um i can assure you that that would never be something that i'm interested in <laughs> but uh you know really ridiculous some of these people romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 18 and you do that you get blocked instantly by the way so i don't, I don't have any time for that why well, need to be counseled to think? No, you don't. I mean, read the Bible. Bible's against sodomy. Bible's against being effeminate and whatever else. Well, I don't really know. That... Go away. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 18. And I'm all for somebody that was a sodomite and they get saved and they turn from that old wicked lifestyle. That's great. Um, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Good description of the modern youths. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known, there is no fear of God before their eyes, before their eyes. Remember that. Turn back to Proverbs chapter 30. You know, if you get saved, if you're truly born again, you can read through Romans chapter 3, the condemnation of man there, and you can read through and just nod your head and say, yeah, boy, wow, that's, that's a perfect description of me. Absolutely. Proverbs chapter 30, and now we'll go to verse 13. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Their eyes are lofty. I'm a good person. Oh, look at all this wonderful stuff that we're creating. Someday we'll be flying around in spaceships and, and have, you know, artificial intelligence doing all of our chores for us and whatever else. I mean, the, the world that some of these people want, this virtual reality, the metaverse or something, You'd have to be insane in the head to want that. Just sit around, you know, and like a vegetable. Well, here's the robot mowing your yard, and here's the robot bringing your food, and there's a robot over chopping firewood, and there's a robot. What a miserable life that would be. I just want to sit around all the time, I guess playing video games or something. Or just walking out through the woods, you know, uh, checking Facebook and playing a video game at the same time as you're walking through the woods. <laughs> uh Get outside and actually do something, you know, physical. <laughs> Hard for me to understand. I actually got a comment the one time, and this, you know, some little uh, punky, you know, was offended by my video I did with losers play video games, you know. And he said, well, this guy's going to be so shocked when the whole world is, you know, in virtual reality and whatever. And, and uh, you know, then what's he going to say then? And I'm thinking, well, you know what? I think you're already in virtual reality. <laughs> Uh, not understanding what's going to happen to this world. But verse 13, there's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. They think everything is getting positive, everything is getting better. Things are just, oh, I can't wait. Oh, oh it's great. Everything's just wonderful. I don't think so. Revelation chapter 13. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Because you see, I don't believe the Antichrist is going to be an old man. 
I think he's going to be a perfect counterfeit of Jesus Christ. We well, say, well, yeah, obviously, but think about the implications of that. If the Antichrist would be 33 years old, like Jesus was when he died on the cross, um, 33-year-old man, when would he have had to been born? 2000, the year 2000, if he shows up in 2033, just assuming there. He could show up in 2040 or something like that too. But the whole point is, he would more than likely be a Gen Zer. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting thing. Kind of like the uh, end of uh, mankind, you know, the final generation there, and then Alpha starts after that. Kind of an interesting thing. Um, Revelation chapter 13, beginning in verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Almost kind of like their eyes would be lifted up. Wow, look at that. <laughs> and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Stop there for a minute. Do you realize how many technologies they have right now in 2022 that could be used to make, an, that could be called the image of the beast? They have these giant statues, you know, around that they can project an image onto them. They have holographic images that they can put up that they're doing in Las Vegas and other places where they have some guy, you know, singing or something like that. Um, Frank Sinatra or whatever, they'll project him up there and he's singing in a concert. They have cell phones, television. There's so many images that they could do. And the false prophet is going to be there and he's going to be putting all this stuff out to cause people to worship the beast. Isn't it interesting that that's exactly what the Gen Zers want? And a lot of the millennials as well. Selfies, the selfie generation. Look at me, I'm going to tell you all about my issues and everything about me and whatever, and I want to get as much worship, or I mean likes and friends, and please like and subscribe and all this other stuff. You see what I'm saying? What if he's the, uh, the biggest YouTuber ever? The Antichrist. Extremely popular when he finally shows up and all the world worships him. Hmm. Then you read over in Revelation chapter 11 with the two witnesses and the whole world, when the Antichrist kills them, they're sending gifts one to another like you could do through cryptocurrencies and PayPal and whatever else. You see how close we're getting to this whole thing? And we're, you know, you get back to the 20th century and a lot of the old timers, they're, you know, they're depicting people taking the mark of the beast and they have a huge big 666 on the forehead. They wouldn't have known about QR codes back then. You know, they put barcodes on or something because you have the two little skinny lines, you know, 666, you know, which there's some truth to that. It's a precursor to what will eventually be there. But the whole point is, you know, their understanding of these future times was so limited, you know, and now we look and we think, Oh, yeah, image of the beast, that would be easy. Oh, mark of the beast, yeah, that would be easy too. And all the world worshiping the beast and everything else. And we're not even there yet. You know, it still could be years out in the, the future. I mean, I don't think it's going to be 20 years from now or anything. I think it's going to be a lot sooner than that. Um, but I don't know. But it's kind of crazy to think about all this stuff. But what is it? It's a cursed generation of the Antichrist. He's going to be one of these people, one of these youths that grew up in this whole high-tech world and whatever else. Very interesting. But let's continue reading here. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. 
Um, and, you know, again, in the past, people were very much, oh, I don't want anything to do with that number, you know, even lost people. Now, the youths, they think it's funny. Oh, if you have to tattoo something on your forehead, they'd be standing in line to do it. You know they would. Hmm. But what are we learning here from this whole thing? Their eyes are, you know, lifted up with pride. They're their lofty eyes and everything. What are we learning? It's an image-based culture that this cursed generation is involved in. They don't want to read a bunch of words on a page. I want the video version of it. Give me the movie version of it and whatever else. Well, the movie version doesn't line up with this. Well, that doesn't matter to me. I want the image-based culture. Um, there was a certain church that uh, controlled people throughout the Dark Ages with images. Huh. Here's a piece of the cross that Jesus died on. And here's part of the actual garment that Peter wore. The, you know, the, and here's the, the... Oh, come into the cathedral and hear the organs and hear the choir up front. And hear all their buddy, everybody dressed in their robes. And here comes the Pope out with his crown on and all this other stuff. Hmm. We're moving into a new dark age through technology. And now you have people that can't stand to read a paper book. With no pictures in it <laughs> you know and uh or you know hey i can read a paper book but i need to be able to scan it with my phone and then it can bring up special neat things and whatever else image you see their eyes are lofty they're lifted up oh wow look at all this it's really bizarre when you think about it matthew chapter 16 Back to Matthew chapter 16. I mean, all this stuff has to be leading to something. All these people, you know. I mean, they're, they're young people that have committed suicide because somebody unfriended them or something on Facebook. You know, panicking because the power went out. I actually read a statistic... They were some. They did some study about you know Gen Z and millennials and the other generations and whatnot, and they said I think it was forty percent of Gen Zers said that they were they'd rather have good Wi-Fi connection than bathroom facilities if they had to pick between the two. Yeah, um, but let's continue here. Matthew chapter sixteen verse four. A wicked. An adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, image-based. And there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Um, the wicked and adulterous generation, when the Lord sees that there's this wicked generation, he'll leave them and he'll depart. And there won't be many of them that get saved, if any. And if you're a young person... Um, you really need to take some things seriously. Understand that you're part of a very wicked generation. And you better not conform to your peers out there. You better make it sure that, uh, that you're different than they are. Proverbs chapter 30. Go back there again. There's one more generation that we're going to talk about. Proverbs chapter 30. And verse 14, back up to verse 11, there's a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother, disobedient to parents, prophesied and fulfilled. Verse 12, there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness, self-righteous generation that thinks that they don't do anything wrong and it blames everything, you know, their own problems on other people. Fulfilled, that's happened as well. Verse 13, there's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Partially fulfilled because it's really going to be fulfilled when the Antichrist shows up and all the image-based culture and everything else. But definitely those people are here right now, these young people. And if it's another 10, 20 years till the Antichrist actually shows up, um, they're really going to be ready for it then, the young people of today. But look at verse 14. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. These young people of today, 
they are they are some really vicious ones. I mean, playing the knockout game in the cities, these black youths that go up and just, you know, see if you can punch out an older man with one hit. Oh, there's a older there's a guy over there drowning. He's in you know in a wheelchair. He fell into a pond. Let's stand here with our cell phones and laugh at the guy as he's drowning. Oh, let's uh let's go and break into the store here, and all the storekeepers come out and and let's just hit him over the head and, and you know and things with all the uh, Black Lives Matter, um, George Floyd riots and everything else that happened what two years ago or something. They're vicious. They're extremely vicious. Oh, well, here's some guy carrying an American flag. Let's just go hit him in the back of the head, and then when he falls down on the pavement, you knocked him out. Let's go over and kick him a couple times. Horrible, vicious people. Some of these these youths, they're going to be the ones that are there in the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, serving the Antichrist. I'll show you. John chapter 16. Back to the New Testament. John chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time killeth, or the time cometh, excuse me, getting ahead of myself, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And when that time is really fulfilled, they're going to think the Antichrist is God. He sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God, the Bible talks about. So they're going to say, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to do what he says. And you can see this generation, this cursed generation of today, how that media tells them what to do and they just snap to attention. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. I will do that. Pretty incredible to see the Bible being fulfilled this way. James chapter 5. I'll give you another theory I have. Another alternate way to look at James chapter 5 here. James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. We'll see that here in a little bit when we get to Revelation chapter 16. But you say, well, these you're talking about youths, though, this cursed generation of the Antichrist. You're talking about youths. They won't be youths in another 10 or 20 years. Hmm. And uh, are they rich? Yeah. They're getting into all this online stuff and Silicon Valley and everything, and they're making heaps of money. It's not real money. It's just fake, you know, fiat currency and digital dollars and whatever else, and just wait till they bring in the central bank digital currencies. Oh, then they're going to be doing all their little scamming through the Internet and everything else. They'll make a lot of money. But let me give you a little interesting thought here. Verse 2, Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have, helped, ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now there's a bunch of things in that verse there. Verse 3, And I've struggled with that thing over the years, and I think, okay, there's some stuff that just does not make sense. Well, problem number one is... This book of James is written to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. In chapter 1, it talks about that verse um, 1. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Um, right now, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ. So, you don't write things to the Jews in the body of Christ and exclude the Gentiles. You don't do that. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, that's there. The Jews and the Gentiles, there's going to be some different things going on there. If I was going into the time of Jacob's trouble, I don't have to get to Jerusalem. Okay, that's not the land that was promised to my fathers. All right, I'm a Gentile, uh, Germanic, you know, ancestry. Um, I don't need to go over there. So if I was going into the time of Jacob's trouble, I'd be hiding out someplace in North America. Um, not going to Europe, back to Germany or whatever else, that'd be a bad place to be in time of Jacob's trouble with all the big brother stuff over there I'd try to be here if society breaks down I'd go to that area where there aren't many people um, but a Jew in that time period they need to get over to Israel and if you're Jewish today I'd try to make a big move to get over there a while very important but here's the thing so doctrinally it's not written to us as Christians 
That's the one issue there. So we can't fully understand what's going on here because it's progressive revelation in terms of things will become more clear as you get into the time of Jacob's trouble. But here's some of the issues with this verse. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And I've gone over that different times, and I think, okay, well, rust in the sense of I'm getting rusty, meaning it's not, I'm kind of out of shape and whatever, and you think, yeah, okay, you know, yeah, all right. You, it's just that you can't use the gold and silver because it's all digital currency, and yeah, all right, that kind of makes sense. But I was listening to an interview, David Morgan on Kitco News, and he's a big expert on silver, precious metals, but specifically on silver. And he got into the thing of technology and how that technology requires precious metals, especially silver. And here's the interesting thing. What the industry does when they create some kind of technology, just looking around, okay, I'll just grab this thing. Here's a little Sony, you know, little action camera thing or whatever else. Um, when they create this, the circuits in this thing have to have silver in them for it to work properly. And there might even be a little bit of gold in some of the, you know, different uh, circuitry in here and whatever else. But here's the thing. They create it first and they make it really expensive. Okay, it's going to be very expensive, the one that the original prototype. And then after they get that done and it works really well, does what they're trying to make it do, they do what's called thrifting. Thrifting means they remove more and more precious metals and, and they try to scale down the cost of this thing so that it can be available to the general population out there. Fascinating. But all electronics have some kind of precious metals in them, mostly silver. And the most, um, the uh, metal that's used the most in solar panels is silver. But the problem is, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey came out, and he was talking about this in this interview. They came out a few years ago, and they said the time's coming when we're going to run out of silver. In fact, the first metal that will disappear off the periodic table, meaning it's gone, we can't mine it anymore, is going to be silver. Huh. And I got to thinking about that, and I thought, wait a second. What if another way to interpret this whole thing, this passage of James chapter 3, verse Three, or chapter 5, verse 3, excuse me. What if another way to interpret this is the gold and silver that's in these technological devices, it's really not worth taking out. I mean, there are processes that you can chemically melt down motherboards and whatever else, and you can extract the gold and the silver and the copper and get them separated out. I've seen the process um, through video and whatnot. I've seen it. So it is possible but if the cost of the chemicals goes up and the cost of electricity and whatever, it becomes just ineffective. It's, it's uh, not, cost, not cost effective, I'll say it that way. So what if these younger generations, the cursed generations of the Antichrist, what if they are heaping to themselves treasure, meaning all their technology for the last days? And you can put a lot of money into your technology, um, a lot into some of these computers and things, the professional ones, you can spend tens of thousands when you get into some of the real big ones, um, real fast ones and whatever else, um, and all your cameras and all your equipment and everything else and your drones. and I mean, it's crazy the kind of money that you can put in. But uh, what happens to that technology when it's no good anymore? It goes into a landfill where it would uh, rust, Hmm. It's not the gold and silver, in other words, that rusts. It's the technology that the gold and silver is part of that rusts. It's not worth getting out of the ground. And you go into the later part of the time of Jacob's trouble, the technology breaks down. We'll be looking at that here in a minute. So they'll take their cell phones and they'll take their high-definition cameras and their computers and their all this other stuff and they'll take it and they'll just put in the landfill and the rest of those technologies will be a testimony against them hmm um, and but another interesting thing here too that ties in with this that I think proves my point your gold and silver is cankered and the rest of them shall be a witness against you 
and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Huh, remember that. Okay, eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped together treasure for the last days. And again, you know, my Bitcoin and all this other stuff, um, you know, well, I mean, we'll get to it here in just a little bit. I, I'm, I don't, I need to say this just so I don't forget. But the thing of um, eat your flesh as it were fire, God puts a grievous sore upon those that have taken the mark of the beast because they have technology in their right hand and in their forehead. Hmm. An interesting thing there. But let's continue here in, in uh, James chapter 5, verse 4. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sab Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Yeah, these people um, in the future... This generation, this cursed generation of the Antichrist, they are going to be very fierce and they're going to basically steal people's lands and, hey, you can work for me and be a peasant to me and whatever else, and they'll just steal from them, essentially. I mean, the scheming that goes on in the financial world, all the insider trading and the put options and, and the this and buy that in the stock market and see this go up and, see, you know, I'm Bitcoin rich and all. I mean, all the little schemes that these people do, it's absolutely amazing. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So there's no way out of this whole thing. You get into that whole world, and you're going to be part of that generation, and I, I just love my technology, I can't live without my technology, and whatever, and I don't think I'm saved, and I don't care about salvation, and you fall for that whole thing. Uh, God has it in for this generation. The generation, the cursed children of the Antichrist. Let me show you another verse that ties into this. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Hmm. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Kind of an interesting thing because I tell my son basically those same things. Little children. He's a little child. Going to be eight years old here in a few days. But he's still a little child. But I tell him about the many Antichrists that are out there in the world. Look at those kids as they're walking by. Look at that girl, how immodestly she's dressed. Look at those boys dressed like a bunch of slobs or gangsters or whatever else. They have no desire for the Word of God. None. Don't be like that. There's a many antichrists. Make sure that you're not one of them. Verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Oh, yeah, I tried that Jesus stuff for a while, you know. Yeah, I tried going to church, and I tried reading the Bible and whatever else, but it was so lame. I mean, it was so ridiculous. Well, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and whatever. I, I hate that stuff now, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a proud atheist now. I, you see? That's what becomes of these young people, those that go along with the peer pressure and want to be like all the rest of them out there. You can't be part of the Gen Z and millennial crowd and whatever and just go along with all the stuff that they're famously known for. You can't go along with that stuff if you're truly born again. You have to buck the system. And I have to buck the system of the Gen X or whatever that I'm supposedly part of and whatever. 
Um, you can't conform to the world. You have to fight it. But I've seen that thing far too many times. Uh, young people that come along and they follow the ministry for a while and then it's, oh, you know, I don't, you know, this and that. And then they go off and they get into the world and, and I don't see a big problem with, you know, using profanity and I don't see a big problem with going out and partying a little bit and I don't see a problem and pretty soon they're, and they're gone. Why? Well, because they're little antichrists and they can't, they can't wait to have that antichrist show up. And he'll be saying, you know, please like me on my, you know, page over here or whatever else. I'll, you know, take my mark upon you or something. And yeah, they'll be falling down, tripping over themselves to get that done. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. <laughs> oh, you're an anti-vaxxer and whatever else. Well, can I explain myself? No, shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. <laughs> Boy, yeah, there's no modern, you know, tie into that, rioting in the daytime, yeah. You know, um, hey, I something I said something you don't like. Let's go riot. There's some event. Some guy got shot and whatever. Let's go riot. Uh, you know, they th overthrew abortion. Let's go riot. They riot in the daytime, showing their you know their rights. <laughs> Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings. These young people, I'm transgender, I'm this and I'm that. I'm going to walk out and I'm going to wear this thing here and, you know, and I'm going to dress this way and act this way and my pronouns are, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Yes, God does curse whole generations unless he sees one that says, I'm not part of this. I'm not like these kids my age. I'm not like these people my age. I'm different than they are. Verse 15, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. You can read about that story where his the ass that he was riding, the donkey, in other words, it God spoke through it and warned him. Verse 17, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. It's reserved for these people. So don't tell me, oh, brother, Brian, you shouldn't speak against these this generation, the young generation that just seems so clueless and whatever. It's reserved for them. If you're part of that generation, you better fight. You better fight to not conform to it. I'm telling you what. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity through videos and social media, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. All the famous youths of today and everything else, if you'd actually go and actually see their life, they are slaves to bondage. Hooked on drugs, medication, pharmaceuticals, you name it. <laughs> Video game addicts and everything else. Yeah. Verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Exactly. Oh, I've watched all your videos, Brother Brian, but I sure can't pull myself away from the popular things that are going on out there with people my age. I miss being around my friends and whatever, and I don't want to look stupid in, in their eyes and, and things. The latter end with you is going to be worse than the beginning. You better, you know, when you get 
to want to know about the Lord and wanting to understand the Bible and whatever, you better count the cost before you make any profession of faith or whatever else or before you call upon the Lord. You better think of what it's going to cost you to follow Jesus Christ. Well, that's work salvation. No, it isn't work salvation. Work salvation is you constantly have to do things to someday possibly be saved. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is you want to say, I want to get saved and I want to be real. I want to be born again, a whole new life. And that life will cause me to not conform to the wicked people out there. And I'm okay with that. I've always been an outcast. I've always been put down and whatever else. I never was popular. I never got along with the crowd and whatever. Quite frankly, people my age make me sick. I don't want anything to do with these people my age. Well, I don't know, brother. I, I'd kind of like be like the lost to win the lost. I want to be like them and think, you're as good as being in hell with the door shut. God has written specific things here about the cursed generation of the Antichrist. You can plainly see it. Everything he's written about is just word for word description of what these modern youths are like. Including this that we're reading right here. They make professions of faith. They get a big head knowledge up here. I've watched all the videos. I've, I've seen all this stuff and everything else. And so I'm a Bible-believing Christian uh, until you find something better to do. Verse 21, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. Um, you have to get so messed up uh, that you just simply say, you know what, um, I'm never going back to that life again. I don't care what people think of me, I don't care how much people laugh at me, how much people mock me, and whatever else, I am never going back to that old life. I don't want anything to do with it. Oh, hey, you know, come on, come with me. Hey, you know, let's just stop at the restaurant, get a drink. You're old enough now, you know, come on. You know, there's some girls there, okay? It's a, you know, you know, you would call it immodest dressed and whatever else. And come on, just once. And they go and say, oh, it wasn't too bad. And I don't know, you know, I kind of had a good time there. And away they go. Uh, hey, Brother Brian, he's so weird. And he, he says all these weird kooky things. You can't this and you can't that. And, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, just this once. I can be forgiven anyhow. And, it, and you go back to it. I've seen it time and time again. Revelation chapter 16. And here we'll end it. Revelation chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image, flesh burning like with fire. Noisome and grievous sore. Ah, ah. Whatever little electronics are in there to get fried. <laughs> And it's just boiling out through your skin and whatever else. And they're screaming in pain and whatever. They've heaped together treasure for the last days. Probably even some gold and silver in that mark of the beast. In the circuitry. Hmm. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, or say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. They are worthy of what's coming. Oh, I just can't believe that God, that God would do these horrible things to these people in the future. Um, they're worthy. They've earned it. The wages of sin is death. You earn wages by the work that you do whose end shall be according to their works. Hmm. You're not saved by works, brethren, but God will judge you by your works. Okay? God will look and he'll say, they rejected me. Why? 
Why did they reject me? Why did they reject my death, burial, and resurrection to pay for their sins? Oh, that's right, because they loved their sins. They weren't sorry for their sins. They didn't need a Savior. They needed a new little thing to do until they're, they got to find something better to do with their time. Okay, you've rejected me. I'm going to judge you by your works. It's an interesting thing. Verse 7, And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Amen to that. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Can you see that with this modern generation? A lot of these young people? Absolutely. No stretch at all of the imagination. I've seen it. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Huh. His kingdom was full of darkness. My phone won't work. What am I going to do? Well, I guess I could go use my laptop computer or I can click on to my virtual reality headset and they put the thing on there, you know, the big thing on their head and they're walking around. It won't work. It won't work. And all their tongues for pain. Going crazy. <laughs> yeah, you want to be part of that, don't you? Real smart. But it's kind of an interesting thing there. Verse 11. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Repented not of their deeds. What verse was that? Um, chapter 16, 11. 16, 11. Hmm. Um, repentance means turning from unbelief to belief then why does it say repented not of their deeds? Get into a big, huge debate on the whole definition of repentance and what does repentance mean. Um, I think it kind of clarifies it right there. Somebody doesn't want to repent of their deeds. God's looking at what they're doing and he says, you're not repenting of what you've done. So that is going to be it for that study. Do I believe that the Antichrist is going to be a Gen Z, millennial type of a, that age group? Yes, I do. I do. It really wouldn't make much sense if he was a, you know, alpha generation or whatever that starts in 2013, I think is what it was. He wouldn't really be old enough to be a world leader at that point in time. Maybe I'm wrong. It could go another 10 years beyond 2033 or out into 2040 or something. I have no idea. Um... I wish that we could go home soon, but I think we're going to be here for a few more years. Unfortunately, as the time of Jacob's trouble is coming, if we get closer to that, then the rapture will be imminent at that point in time, just to clarify my position. It's never been imminent in the sense of it could have happened at any time through church history. It could have happened in 1702, and then you have, you know, 300 plus years of time between the end of the church age and the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble. What do you do for salvation in those 300 years? Hey, that's what I've preached against. I am not against the thing of, uh, you know, that when you get close to the time of Jacob's trouble, that there will be imminent, the rapture will be imminent, or the catching up of the body of Christ, to use the biblical term. Um, but uh, I believe the Antichrist is alive right now. I do. And I believe the many Antichrists are alive right now, and then you can see them plainly. All the prophecies that we read today line up perfectly with this young generation. This generation that I see and they do things and I just think, that is so cruel, that is so cold, I can't even fathom that. And, you know, most of them that I talk to are just brain-dead zombies. Just to be very blunt about the whole thing. But I've seen a few. I've met a few face-to-face. -face. You start talking to them, they speak very well and they're very respectable. And they act like I acted when I was a little boy. And even on back beyond that, 
And I think there's some hope for this young boy or this young girl. Um, but you have to fight against that stuff. If you're part of that generation and you are developing some healthy fear of God, you have to realize um, God expects some things from you. He doesn't just save you and then walk away. You know, oh, hey, uh, you know, some be like some wealthy guy coming up to you and he says, uh, hey, I'd like to adopt you as my son. You say, really? Sure, here, here's the paperwork. There, you're adopted as my son. See ya, have a good life. You'd say, well, don't I get to come live at your mansion? Don't I get to, you know, you, aren't you going to provide for me? Well, oh, I don't know, whatever. I don't know, yeah. you know, just do what you want with your life. <laughs> It's so bizarre. Of course God changes your life. So, um, just wanted to put that study out there. It's been something I've been thinking about for a while. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, about the thing of the technology, possible James chapter 5, verse 3. Is it describing technology? The gold and the silver being rusted, and that there's a you know pain that's involved with the whole thing there, and they've heaped together treasure for the last days. You know, I don't know. It's an interesting thought. And on the issue of gold and silver and platinum and palladium and any other of the, well, they would be the precious metals. And then you have the base metals, the copper, you know, lead and all the other, you know, ones down there. Um, on that issue, I will say this. Uh, I've suggested in the past to people, you know, you want to get into gold and silver or platinum whatever, that's fine. Copper, you can save up if you have old copper wires or pre-1982 copper pennies. Keep those. They'll be worth more in the future. Whatever else. Um, I think it's great to do that. Now, should you put all your money into it? Of course not. You don't put all your money into anything in terms of stocks or investments or banks or whatever else or precious metals. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm thinking for the future is the Antichrist system is going to be ruled over by Rome. The woman rides the beast. Rome is known for having gold and precious stones and, and things. So Rome is very interested in collecting all of that wealth. If you study what happened in World War II, a lot of the gold things were being taken from the museums and from the wealthy in Europe, specifically in Germany, and they were being taken to the Vatican, taken out through the Catholics and always oh, just to protect the, you know, the wealth and things. Yeah. And um, I think that what they're going to do is they're going to make a time right now. Most precious metals are pretty cheap in the future. I think that they're going to be, there's going to be some kind of a thing where you have to turn them in at a certain point in time. I've actually heard of this executive order. Um, I don't remember the number of it, but they're saying that they're going to, it's an executive order to ban cash December 13th of this year, 2022. Will that come to pass? I hope not. I hope that they don't make some kind of a central bank digital currency happen. I know that these idiots are anxious for it, but we need to pray against that. We need to fight against it. But to say that gold and silver is going to be there and whatever, well, there will be people that will hide it. But I think that the international bankers, whatever else, are going to make a time where it's going to be very um, attractive to sell any precious metals that you have and exchange them for whatever digital currency or whatever else that they will have at that point in time. And they'll do that in an effort to get the gold and silver to basically take it. Um, what they did back with the first Great Depression with the confiscation of the gold is they offered a time where you could come in and you could turn it in and they would give you Federal Reserve notes. And after that they said we're going to confiscate it. And a lot of people actually hid their gold at that point. Um, they didn't confiscate silver if I said that. I apologize, that's not correct. They didn't really confiscate silver. They just kind of, you know, got rid of it in 1964 um, with the new coins that they came out with. Well, 1965, I think, is when they came out with the new coin. 64 is when the last silver quarters and dimes and half dollars and things. That's when they stopped making those. Um, I'm saying this for a reason, okay, because going forward in the future... Uh, it's going to be really weird financially. Um, and I've heard of people that are saying we're just going to you know, trade with gold and silver. I think that that's a great idea. But I really feel that there's going to come that point in time when the bankers are going to confiscate the gold and silver. 
to get it all over to the Vatican so that then there can never be any kind of a competing currency or whatever else in the future. And if you have gold and silver or any other precious metals at that point in time after that, then you'll be considered an enemy of the state is what I'm thinking. So that tying into James chapter 5 verse 3, um, you could make the argument that, you know, and I have in the past, that people are heaping all this gold and silver together for the last days and it becomes useless and it's in a vault someplace and you can't sell it or trade it or whatever, which there's some truth to that. But I think, you know, this thing I've been thinking about here with that it's actually technology it's talking about, the rust of it, it's in the ground, it's no good anymore. Their, their technology has broken down, that it's causing a sore on their hands. Um, like the Bible says, I think that that's actually the better interpretation of that passage. So if you have precious metals or if you're buying precious metals, there is a time period, a time frame when that will work. But to say that we can do that the whole way to the catching up of the body of Christ, I don't know. I really don't know. And it, you know, what if they come out with a central bank digital currency and they get rid of the dollar and they get rid of, you can't have gold and silver and whatever else. What should we do? Well, if that point in time comes, it's not going to be connected to the Antichrist until the body of Christ is gone. So you're not going to go to hell if you take the central bank digital currency. The problem is, if we comply with it, then they'll kick in social credit score and then we have problems. Because then they can just say, oh, you believe this certain way or, oh, you haven't had the hokey pokey, you know, in your shoulder. Um, we need to shut down your account. I mean, I'm already experiencing problems with the bank and I'm sure if you if you are out there put it in the comments I'd like to hear your stories of the bank just saying oh hey we had to shut down you know your your card or whatever fraud detection center because you bought something that we didn't approve of or you go into the bank and you ask for a couple thousand dollars because you're trying to buy a vehicle or something and they we can't give you that money I mean I'm hearing so many stories of all this stuff ATMs not working and whatever else let me know I'd like to hear the stories about that I'm very interested in that actually so we have a great group of informed people on this website, or on this channel, I should say. Uh, I do have a website, kingjamesvideoministries.com, but on this channel, there's a lot of very informed people. Um, I'm not going to say everybody, every one of my subscribers or viewers are saved, because that's certainly not true. But there's a lot of people here that are awake to what's going on. And it isn't enough just to say, I'm awake to the New World Order and the globalist agenda and all that other stuff, but then you're messed up in, in your health and you're messed up with a bunch of other things. It's a whole package of how to stay healthy, to stay away from their kill centers, hospitals, and, um, you know, you're saved, you're born again, truly saved, and, you know, there's not that many of us. So this is one of the places where you'll find true believers. And uh, be careful in the comments because you will run into a lot of fakes. And um, what they'll do, children of the Antichrist, what they'll do is they seek to draw away disciples after them. They went out from us. Remember that. Um, and what they'll do is they'll, they'll get to writing back and forth with you. And then they'll say, hey, you know, would you like to talk on Skype sometime? And sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, people have gotten married, met each other on this channel in the comments. And they're together and they have children and it's wonderful, praise the Lord. But then you'll meet some really weird people, you know. And um, there's whole, you know, other channels out there that have basically, there are other antichrists that were once friends of this ministry and then they go out and I see viewers that I've known for years, they disappear and then they're appearing on those channels over there and I think, ah, okay, <laughs> in the comments. And I think, antichrists. Um, it's not that you have to agree with me and everything, brethren, but the whole point is, um, I've seen this thing over the years where these antichrists will go and they'll draw away disciples after them, themselves. And then they're all, you know, their, their uh, purpose of fellowship is to hate Brian Denlinger. Uh, so um, that's going to be it for this study. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in upcoming videos.